From July this year, Newcastle City Centre will be operating a clean air zone toll system. So some of us are going to have to pay for the privilege to take our vehicles into the city centre. But what exactly is a clean air zone? Where's it going to be? Who's going to have to pay? And how much is it going to cost? Well, in this video, to answer some of those questions, I've got Jordan Reeve back on the channel and he's going to explain everything. So why don't you help him out as well? He's trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I'll leave a link in the description box below to get onto his channel. Jordan, over to you, mate. Thanks, Eddie, for the introduction. I'm Jordan Reeve. I run a new YouTube channel based around planning and the built environment. I'm going to tell you today if you're going to have to pay to enter Newcastle once the clean air zone starts. The clean air zone is due to start in July 2022. A clean air zone is an area of the city you have to pay to drive through or enter. This is in order to improve air quality and overall pollution within this area. So today I'm here, I'm on top of, uh, I guess this is Jury's Inn car park. This is gonna be one of the areas where the clean air zone will start as you come in over the Red Hoop Bridge, which is behind me. So I'm gonna show you some of the areas where the clean air zone will be. I'm gonna tell you a bit about uh, the whole reason behind it and everything for it. In 2017, the government issued a legal direction, and this basically meant that the councils of Newcastle, Gateshead, and North Tyneside had to take action in order to reduce the levels of air pollution. North Tyneside's direction was later removed as the evidence came to light that the coast road section where air pollution was considered above these levels actually wasn't with new readings. So London was one of the first cities in the UK to get a form of a clean air zone. This was the form of the low emissions zone. However, this recent sort of brand of clean air zones have come around in the past three years. A recent legal direction has forced a number of local authorities to produce clean air zones. These include Bath, Birmingham, Portsmouth, Bradford, Bristol, Greater Manchester, among others. The clean air zone charge will likely be a system of sort of automated cameras that detect cars going through and then automatically bill to the corresponding address. And clean air zones will operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So there's no time when these cameras will be switched off. You'll have to pay this charge by 11.59 on the sixth day after driving into the zone. You can also pay six days before you enter the zone. If you do not pay the charge within this sort of set period, you'll receive a penalty charge notice. There are certain exemptions for driving through the zone where you don't have to pay. This includes ultra low emission vehicles, historic vehicles, vehicles belonging to a disabled person or disabled passenger tax vehicles and certain agricultural vehicles will also not have to pay. Newcastle City Council are looking to produce a scheme of packages to support those affected by these changes. The details of this have not actually been agreed and these are still sort of up in the air. It's likely that following the creation of a clean air zone, the amount of vehicles actually entering the city centre will drop in number. Clean air zones are required to be visible on the ground and have clear diversions around the payment zones. So the idea is that you wouldn't be funneled into these without a way of getting around them. What's likely to happen in Newcastle is that traffic will be diverted around the A1 Western Bypass or to the Tyne Tunnel to cross the River Tyne. Of course, the Tyne Tunnel already incurs a fee, so the majority of drivers are likely to head around the A1 Western Bypass. Another concern is the impact of the city centre in terms of footfall following on from Clean Air Zone. A recently implemented Clean Air Zone in Birmingham has tracked footfall since its implementation and places this against Manchester's footfall in a study undertaken by Centre for Cities. Manchester has not yet implemented its clean air zone, therefore this provides an interesting comparison of the impact of these zones, which whilst there was a minor gap during some stages of footfall comparison, the footfall return has been largely the same even with Birmingham's clean air zone. This raised the question, will you be charged to enter Newcastle in July 2022? And the answer to this is, if you drive one of these certain vehicles, which are considered non-compliant, these include HGVs, buses and coaches, which will incur a cost of £50 per day. Taxis and vans will incur a cost of £12.50 per day. A national online vehicle checker will be made available, so people can check their vehicles before driving into these clean air zones. Private cars 
mopeds, motorcycles, all will not be charged to drive into this clean air zone in Newcastle. So private cars will not be charged at first, but there is a potential of likelihood that if emission levels in the city do not reduce under safe levels, that further charging will have to be made and this will likely be passed on to private cars or the emissions rules will get a lot stricter. Another concern is people worrying about their bus and taxi fare actually increasing following these vehicles having to pay and this cost will be passed on to them. It's not possible to say this with complete clarity of what will happen. However, money buses operating in the city centre already meet the standards and as buses constantly upgrade their fleets, they will likely meet the standards as well. However, for private taxis and Ubers, it's likely that these costs will be passed directly onto the owner of these vehicles and whether these make the decision to raise their prices based on this is uncertain at the moment. It's likely that the future of Newcastle City Centre will continue on the route it's currently taking of pedestrianisation and further enhancements to the clean air zone. Private cars are likely to be continue to be deterred from entering this. So I'd like to thank Eddie again for featuring on his channel. Make sure you subscribe to Eddie's channel. Uh, he produces content like this with myself, all sorts of Newcastle United stuff, as well as a lot of cultural stuff, which is, seems really interesting. Thanks for watching.